Entry level jobs suck. First of all, you need two years of experience just to get one. Most of them aren't very high paying and you end up doing the grunt work that nobody else wants to do. Let's be honest, you're at the bottom of the totem pole and you are living in Suckville. Population, you. But there are some jobs out there where entry level not only will get you paid really well, but there's also high demand and you might even have a good time. And in this video, that's exactly what we're gonna be going over today. And by the end of the video, you're gonna have a great idea of what entry level jobs are good. Now, before we get into that, I do have an announcement to make. I've been working really hard over the last few months on what is basically my life's work up to this point. This is the culmination of the last few years of thousands of hours of studying and also working with hundreds of different people one-on-one -on -one in order to help them choose what the best college degree is for them and also fast track their progress through college to get the most out of college with the least amount of effort and help them to get their first entry-level job right after college. And that is the College 101 course, which you can find down in the description below. And this is the beginning of the launch, so it's a steep discounted price. It won't be available for that long you can check that out down in the description below and also if you haven't done it already go ahead and gently tap the like button hit the subscribe button ring that notification bell and most importantly share the video I don't have a big marketing department behind me like a lot of these universities do I'm just one guy trying to get my message out to you so sharing the video liking subscribing hitting the notification bell all of those things really help and I truly appreciate it. With that being said, let's jump right in. This is the second time I'm recording this video because apparently my computer didn't want to work. But the first one on the list is going to be database administrator. Now database administrators are basically going to help store, retrieve, and organize data. And if you remember, I've talked about this in some of my other videos about how data is basically the most valuable commodity available. It's even more valuable than gold or oil. And if you think about it, this makes total sense. If a company knows that you are in the market to buy a pair of $100 shoes, for instance, that means that you are probably somewhere between 100 and 300 times more likely to buy those shoes when they show you an ad versus somebody who's not in the market to buy the shoes. And so that means $1 in marketing budget is going somewhere between 100 and 300 times further. Now that's kind of an extreme example, but even if you're just twice as likely to buy something, it's still gonna be worth it. Now on top of managing the databases, they also make sure that they are safe from breaches. And database administrators can work in all kinds of different industries from healthcare to sales to marketing to finance. And they usually hold a bachelor's degree in either computer science or another technology degree like information technology management. Now they make around $93,000 a year and because of the fact that it's so hot, you will very quickly be able to get to that level. The job growth over the next 10 years is around 10%, which is much faster than average as well. The next one on the list is going to be a web developer slash web designer. And web developers are of course going to be creating websites, usually using HTML or JavaScript. They're also going to be debugging and testing websites to make sure that they work properly. So for instance, a web developer likely designed the interface that you're seeing right now on YouTube. So they designed the ability for you to boop that like button and hit the subscribe button, ring the notification bell as well. Now, one cool thing about web development is a lot of the time you don't actually have to get a bachelor's degree in order to get into it. A lot of the time an associate's degree is fine. In some cases, you can just get a certification in order to start in web development and you can get paid around $73,000 a year. Now, on top of that, the job growth here is gonna be around 8% over the next 10 years, which is good. Next one on the list is going to be an industrial engineer. And this is basically the combination of logistics and engineering. So basically like supply chain management and engineering combined, it's a great combination of business and engineering skills. And industrial engineers are going to monitor, create, and examine a process within a business that creates a product or a service. And they're going to make sure that the process is efficient as possible and the product is as good as possible. And on top of that, they are going to design control systems to monitor the efficiency and the quality of the product. Now for that, they're gonna be making around $88,000 a year, and this is another one where you would actually get a bachelor's degree, you'd most likely get an industrial engineering degree. And this is one of my favorite careers out there. I think it's a 
fantastic combination of business and engineering. I think it's underrated. This one's also growing at 10% over the next 10 years, which is great as well. Next on the list is going to be a nurse and they make around $75,000 a year. And in this particular case, we're gonna be talking about an RN or registered nurse. Now, usually depending on the program, this is gonna take somewhere between three to four years in order for you to become an RN. And I think everybody is familiar with nurses. They do pretty much everything in the hospital. They are the backbone of the healthcare system. They are responsible for recording patients' symptoms and checking their medical history, helping to check patients' vital signs. They're gonna be analyzing results, performing diagnostic tests. Then they're also helping with administering medication and they even help with procedures. Nurses do so much in the hospital, there's always shortages and they are completely vital to the healthcare system. Now on top of that, there is millions of different nursing jobs, hundreds of different specialties, and so it's pretty much impossible that you're not gonna be able to find a job that fits your personality really well. And if that wasn't enough, there's also a ton of room for vertical growth. So for instance, you know, you've got RN, that's kind of like a four year degree or so. You can also get a master's degree, which would be nurse practitioner, or you can even become a doctorate in nursing. All of these, of course, will teach you new skills and you'll be making more money and moving up the chain. Now, on top of that, if you want to go more of a business route, first of all, you could start your own business or you could move up the ladder in hospitals. A lot of the time you will find that, you know, presidents, vice presidents, uh, managing directors, for instance, will be nurses. And that makes sense because nobody knows a hospital as well as a nurse. So great career to get into, great choice. The next one is going to be two different careers where they're kind of just doing the same job or very similar jobs, and that's going to be an environmental health and safety engineer and then a built environmental specialist. Though they make around $113,000 a year. And every time you step into a building, you're actually putting your life on the line for not only the people who designed the building, but also the people who maintain it. So a couple obvious examples is, let's say there's an earthquake, there are ways of designing the building to maximize your chances of survival. Same thing with a fire. You know, if a fire starts, you want fire alarms to go off and water to start spraying into the building. Even if you're on the top floor, you want there to be an opportunity for you to, you know, go out a fire exit. You also wanna make sure that the air you're breathing is clean. You know, if there's somebody who's in the next room and they have some kind of rare virus or rare bacteria, you don't want that virus or bacteria to be in the air that you're breathing. And I'm just really touching the surface of all the different things that you look into with these careers very important careers. A lot of the time you're gonna be working for government agencies, and not only will you be doing inspections and making sure everything's safe, but in a lot of cases, you'll actually help people to design buildings that are even more safe. So really cool career, another great one to look into. And the next one on the list is gonna be one that a lot of people know I talk about on this channel, and that is software engineering. So with this one, you're gonna make around $110,000 a year, and technically software engineering is different than software development. However, at a lot of businesses, they're going to essentially be doing the same thing. But technically speaking, a software engineer would almost be like an architect that designs the house, whereas the software developer would be the one who actually builds it out. So the software engineer designs the framework that they, you know, the, the big picture that they want to be coded and the software developer actually does the code. Now, as a software engineer, you'd probably be working in a small team. You'd be working with uh, different programmers and other people who are working on a project. I've gone over this one a ton in other videos, so I think you guys get the idea here. Just a super, super valuable skill to have. But anyways, the next one on the list is going to be a systems engineer. And remember when I said the industrial engineer was basically like, you know, supply chain management or logistics mixed with engineering? Well, systems engineering is very similar to that, but it's more like project management mixed with engineering. So you're sort of gonna be overseeing a project and you kind of have to be a jack of all trades, right? So you have to know a little bit about everything. So for instance, if you were overseeing the creation of a UFO in a company, right? You're overseeing the creation of the UFO, there would be chemical engineers, nuclear engineers for the crystals that you put in there, right? You'd also have mechanical engineers, electrical engineers. You would have uh, computer engineers to put the hardware in there that the aliens use. And the systems engineer would be kind of looking at everything at a high level, making sure everything integrates together and making sure the system works as a whole. Now this is incredibly valuable. Not very many people can do systems engineering and I'm gonna be honest with you, this is probably the hardest one to get into at an entry level. However, if you can get into it at an entry level, if you're like a genius, 
this can be a fantastic career and I'm very bullish on this career. I think it's gonna be more and more valuable into the future. And you will of course be making well over $80,000 a year doing systems engineering. If you haven't done it already, check out my other videos right here. I made them just for you. Go ahead, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, ring the notification bell and comment down below any thoughts, comments, criticisms, etc. that you have on this video. And I'll see you in the next one.